Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part 14 of my web design and programming tutorial. Today, I'm going to divert away from PHP and focus in on MySQL for a little bit. And then after I explain how to use MySQL and SQL in general, I will go back into PHP and then show you how to manipulate databases using PHP. And then we'll move onwards from that point on. Well, the first thing you're going to want to do after you have MySQL installed, of course, is know how to log on. And you just type in MySQL, and I'm in my terminal right now. And I specifically, my version of MySQL is MySQL 5. Then you can type in dash H for host, which would be local host followed by your user ID, and then followed by dash P. Then it's going to ask for your password, and then boom, I'm logged into SQL. Well, just so you know how, this is how you get out of SQL. You just type quit, enter, and you're gone. Now I'm going to show you a shortcut. If you want to execute the last command you issued in your terminal that started with MY, boom, like that, and you're back into MySQL. Just as easy as that. I'm going to clear my scroll back so you can see exactly what I'm doing inside of here. And if you want to create a new database, you're often told to do everything in capital letters, but you do not have to. So I'm going to create a database. And a database is just a storage of information. So you can store like first names, last names, states, birth dates, streets, cities, address, so forth and so on. And you can just think of it as a spreadsheet, except a lot more powerful. Now to create a database, I'm going to create one called customer. You just type in create database and then the name of your database and hit enter. Boom, you just created a database. Now if you want to show databases, all the databases that you have currently, you have to end it with a semicolon. Just type in show databases and it's going to show you all of the databases that you currently have on your database. And if you want to use specifically the customer database, guess what you do? You type in use customer and you just change your database. And if you want to see the current database you're using, type in select database followed by parentheses and it shows you you're currently using the customer database. And if you want to create a table inside of your database, just type in create table, getting the point this is pretty easy, and I'm going to call it customers, and I'm just going to hit enter, put an opening parentheses, and I'm going to define my database, all the different things are going to be in it. So I'm doing a customer database, so I want the first name, and because I don't know how long the first name is going to be, I'm going to type in V-A-R-C-H-A-R, -R. this is just like a data type, and let's put in 25. So I'm going to say, I expect the first name to be about 25 characters in length or less. However, if it isn't, that's perfectly fine. Then I'm going to type in not null. This doesn't have to be capitalized, just did it so you can see it a little bit better on the screen. And all this means is this information must be entered. If it isn't, we're going to call an error. So if we are going to create a new customer in the customer da database by defining not null, that means you are demanding that they put a first name in. Also, it makes sense to have a last name, and we're going to keep everything the same for the last name. Then I'm going to show you a new data type, and it is called character data type, and you use it whenever you know exactly how many characters you're going to have. In this case, up to a maximum of two characters. Not in all, I'm going to say I absolutely must have that. And I'm also going to say that if something isn't entered, I want to use PA as my state. Then I'm going to create a birth date of the date data type. And I'm going to say that that also absolutely must contain information. And I'm going to get more into describing the date data type here in a second. It's just what you think it is. Then don't get yourself too excited. I'm going to define an enumerator. And what that means is it is either going to contain male or female. You can actually have strings in here, but I'm just going to leave it as M or F just to keep it nice and simple. And all this means is the only values we're going to accept for content labeled under sex is either M or F. We will not accept anything else. And we're also going to say we absolutely must have that by putting not null in here again. Then don't get too upset. This is a little tiny bit complicated. We're going to define a customer ID. Just think of this like your social security number or any type of identification number. We're going to say it's going to be an integer, meaning it's not going to have any decimal places. We're also going to say that it's going to be unsigned, meaning it is not possible for this to be a negative number. Not null, again, you know what that means, it must contain a value. 
and I'm going to define auto increment. And all that means is my first customer, for example, would be customer one, customer two would be the second, three, four, or five. It's going to auto increment. It's going to continue to increase in value. And this is going to be my primary key. And this just states that this value must be unique and that you plan on using it to speed up the process of searching through your databases. And I'll get much more into what a primary key is and keys in general, foreign keys and such in a later tutorial. And then we're going to define another one, another variable called last meeting. And we're going to give this the timestamp. We're going to say that this doesn't have to be entered if they don't want to. And a timestamp is just a date that also goes into minutes and seconds and milliseconds and all that again. More on that in this tutorial in just a little bit. Then I'm going to type in money owed, and I'm going to say this is a float because it's a number that can contain a decimal place. And I'm going to put null in here saying that I don't need a value in there. You now know a lot about MySQL just from creating this one table. Then you want to have your closing parentheses and your semicolon and hit enter. Boom, you just created a new table inside of MySQL. And if you want to show the table, just type in show tables and you can see customers is right here. You just created the customer table inside of this database. Now, if you want to delete it, drop table and you're probably thinking he's crazy. Crazy, but I'm going to show you another way to load tables. You just type in drop table customers to delete that table. And then if we type in show tables again, you're going to see nothing came up because it's empty because you just deleted everything. All right, so I'm going to jump out of my SQL and I'm going to show you how easy it is to import that information again. So what do we do? We type quit. Then I want to load all that information into my SQL. And you can see right here on the screen everything that I just typed in. However, I saved it as a file called createCustomer.sql. If you can see over here, create customer. And I'm going to show you how another way you can create tables inside of SQL, real nice and easy. So now to load that information or run those SQL statements inside of SQL, you're going to type in MySQL 5 or whatever you have versions. The table that you want to run this SQL command on. The file that I just showed you that contains the SQL statements, MySQL admin dash p. There you go. It loaded all that in there, and I'm going to prove it to you. I'm back into MySQL. Use customer. Type in show tables, and you can see customers is loaded back inside of there. And then if I specifically want to see more information on that specific table, I just type in either describe or DESC, cut off the bribe, and type in customers. And you can see all that information that we just entered is right here on the screen. If I shrink that down a little bit so that you can see it a little bit better. So there is everything that you defined and how you created those tables and so forth and so on. Now let's say that you want to come in here and actually start plugging information into the table that you created in your database. How do you do that? Well, just type in insert into customers and the word values. I'm going to make that uppercase so you can see it a little bit better. And then I'm going to type in all the different things I want inside of here. So I'm going to say Paul Jones, stay, he lives in the state of Pennsylvania, say that his birth date is 1972-10-2, say that he's male, then I'm going to put in null for the customer ID. And why that's fine is it's going to auto increment, so put that in there. And you would never type in a timestamp like this, but I'm going to do it. Normally, you would use the now command, which I'm going to get into here in a little bit. But this would be the last time you supposedly saw him. And let's say he owes us $54.96. Boom. Okay, we typed in. We got all that information inside of there. And let's just say that we want to prove that that went in there. I'm just going to say real quickly here, select everything, that's what this little star means, and display it to screen from the table called customers. And you're going to see Paul Jones, PA, birth date, sex, customer ID is one, last meeting date, money owed, so forth, and so on. So there's that information that we just entered in regards to Paul Jones, our one and only customer. And I went in here and added a couple more customers to the database or the table just so we could play around with some additional things. Just know that you could also type in insert into customers, values, last name, first name, followed by values, Paul Jones. If everything was not 
were acquired through not and all, that is. So that is just another way that you could enter individual values inside of the table of the, the database. Then let's say I want to, to put out to screen, just so you can see some additional commands, all the first names from table customers, easy enough. And you can see that I put it all of the first names for all the customers that I've stored in the table inside of my database. And I'm gonna do lots of examples on this stuff, so in the next tutorials. So I want to display the last name and the birth date from customers and you can see that it does that quite easily and we're going to get into a lot more complicated things here such as display everything for customers where the item called money owed is greater than ten dollars and you can see everybody owes me more than ten dollars and of course you can use the less than and less than and equal to not equal to's and so forth and so on again we're going to get more into that in upcoming tutorials and just to give you one more sql query that's a little bit more complicated i want all the first names from customers where money owed is greater than ten dollars oh, let's just say greater than fifty dollars and state is equal to PA. And you can see that Paul and Rick both owe me more than $50. So both those names showed up. And in regards to the data types that are available with MySQL, all of them, right here you can see a list of all the main data types. There's tiny int. You would use this if you plan on not having any digits higher than 127 or less than 128. Or if you mark these as unsigned, you're going to be able to do these two numbers added together in total length. Small int would basically be anything up to 32,768. Medium int, integers are quite large, two to the power of 31. Big ints, and you can see floats are also quite large. And here's doubles, and remember floats and doubles are just numbers with decimal places. And then to review again, the string types are character. That's whenever you have a fixed maximum length. Those are best to use whenever you want to conserve space and also speed. Variable characters is whenever it's a variable length. Use blobs whenever you want to contain a large and lot of amount of information in regards to like comments or something like paragraphs of text. Use a blob. Enumerator, that's whenever you have a limited number of total values like our female or male example I gave before. Sets would be whenever you have a limited number of values, however, you want the person to actually be able to choose multiple different values from there, like delivery methods might be an option where you'd want to maybe select like deliver in back and COD and you wanted to keep all of your delivery options all in one area and you wanted to be able to select multiple options for each single one of them. That's whenever you would use a set. I'm going to give examples. And here are all the date and time variable types you have in MySQL and exactly how they're laid out. So I'm going to continue on with MySQL in the next tutorial with a ton more examples. Again, if you want to read this stuff, there is a link to an article in the underbar and that might also provide you with more understanding in regards to MySQL. Leave any questions or comments below. Otherwise, till next time.